Welcome back everybody to the channel and welcome to January 1st, 2023. I have to admit something to you guys. Over the last probably two or maybe even three months, I really have made almost no progress on my Super Duty. I did fit the top inboard wing skins, which was a lot of work, but I think that's about all I've done. Mostly because I've been busy with work and in December was Christmas parties and holidays and work. But a lot of it is because I'm at the point now where I have two major things I have to do. I need to install the engine and I need to paint. Neither of those two I can do right now. So I have a whole bunch of little things that I've been needing to do for a long time, but I've just been putting off because I don't want to do them. But I've decided that since I can't put the engine in and I can't paint right now, I might as well knock out all these little annoying things that need done. Today, I'm going to show you a few of those annoying things. Now, just like I showed you previously on the fuselage, there's a lot of areas where I need to remove the rattle can primer, like right here on the wing. So I'm just going down and using MEK to remove this primer. I got about half the wing done here. And as you can see, here's the green primer sticking out of the, under that top skin. All of that has to be removed. Well, I have all the extra primer removed from the top of the wing, other than just a little bit out on the wing tip yet. I do have primer on the bottom of the wing, but instead of working upside down, I will wait until I remove the wings and then I can put the wing upside down on a workbench and clean that off. One of the other things I need to do when it is on the workbench upside down is I have to drill the holes and put the nut plates in here for the access cover. I talked about this hole on a video a long time ago. Uh, this will be access for the pedo heat controller from Dynon. That's where it will mount. This is a heated pedo tube. Before I remove this inboard wing skin from the top of the wing, I made a little pen mark on here. There was just a little bit more that I needed to trim off. So I'm using the Dremel to trim just a little bit here. Obviously, once I'm done with the Dremel, I clean it all up with sandpaper and I get a real nice smooth edge. The next order of business is removing some of these parts here. The fairing is done, so it can be removed. Once that's off, I can start removing the windshield and the top window. Well, you guys might remember that in a video a while ago, I mentioned that I had to put these rivets in here just to make that fiberglass fairing because that fairing goes over here and you have to mold that fiberglass over the rivets. Otherwise the fiberglass will be straight and then, or flat. And then when you put a rivet in here, it's not going to, the fairing won't sit correctly. So I had to put these in here temporarily. So now I'm going to have to drill all of these out to remove this glare shield skin. I have all those rivets drilled out and I was going to take the skin off and I was wondering why it won't come off. <laughs> and then I realized I had to put all these rivets in here too for that fairing. So I have to drill all these out also on both sides. This is why modifying an airplane adds a lot of time and expense. I had to put all those rivets in there just to make the fairing. Now I have to drill them all out, but that's the way it goes. Well, that wasn't too bad. The panel's removed. Now I really need to go through here with a shop vac and a brush to clean up a bunch of dust and metal shavings. And I, there is a little bit of wiring that I have to finish yet. So I can start working on that. Now here's something else I need to figure out. This is my elevator trim here. And you can see this is the light for the position indicator. And you can see how bright it is. Maybe it doesn't come across real bright in the video, but it's a really, really bright LED. And in the manual for this, for the installation manual, there's a wire you can connect up to a positive. So if you add power to it, it dims this. 
And what I did was I hooked it up to my nav lights because I figured during the day, my nav lights are probably on and I can dim this. And certainly at night, my nav lights will be on and then I would want this dimmed. But as you can see, it doesn't work anymore. You can see in this clip here, when I first wired it, when I turn my nav lights on, the indicator dims. And when I turn the switch off, it goes back to bright. But I don't know why all of a sudden that stopped working. All the wires are still connected. So I need to figure that out. And some of you have asked why I use this indicator instead of putting the flat position on the Dynon. You can certainly do that on a Dynon. I did this solely because I liked how this looks. It's just kind of old school, which is kind of what I wanted for the plane. And yes, I know the Dynon isn't very old school, but I just like the looks of this. You can certainly make your flat position indicator on your, your Dynon screen, but I happen to like how that looks. I'm just about ready to remove these wings permanently until they're painted. And really there is so much of this airplane that's ready for paint. And that's really kind of what I need to be working on. I need, kind of need to get the hangar set up for paint. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because I just don't have room in here now to build a paint booth with the cruiser and the pits. But anyway, once the wings come off, the next step before the fuselage can get painted is I need to glue this window into place. I'd like to wait and to glue this in until it's a little bit warmer out. Just because I don't know if it, the aluminum in here is really cold because my hanger is only about 45 to 50 degrees. And you know, when the, the aluminum heats up, especially when you take it outside in the summertime, it's going to want to expand a little bit. And I don't know what that's going to do if this was glued in when it's so cold. So I'd like to glue this in maybe at like 60 or 70 degrees, kind of in the middle there. I guess I could heat the hanger up and do that or just wait. But anyway, I do want to get that window glued in. To glue that window in, I do need to have access through here just to hold it and put these little clips in place. So that's why my windows are not in the fuselage yet. Now I did say, I think on a previous video that I was going to paint the fuselage and then rivet in the windows. But I decided not to do that just because with this being army green, I don't want all the silver rivets around all the windows. I'd like to have the rivets painted. So the steps would be to glue in that top window and that would be done. Then I will rivet in the side windows. And then obviously the wings would be off at that point. I'll take all the landing gear off and get the fuselage completely ready for paint. You know, I haven't bought an engine yet because I didn't think I really needed it right now. My original plan was to get the fuselage completely painted. In fact, the wings and everything. So firewall back, the airplane would basically be 100% done. Then I'd get an engine, bolt it on, fit the cowling, and I'd be good to go. But the more I've thought about this, I kind of need an engine now because I'd like to put the engine in now put the glare shield back on and fit the cowling before the fuselage is painted because fitting that fiberglass cowling up against the fuselage and moving it around and getting everything lined up will tend to scratch the paint. And I really don't want to scratch any of the paint on here. So I think having the engine installed and finishing the wiring and getting the cowling fit before the fuselage is painted would probably be a good idea. But that should not stop me from progressing because I can paint the wing struts, the wings, the tail pieces, the landing gear, all of the trim pieces, the doors. I mean, there's a million parts I can get painted in the meantime. So that's what I want to start working on once I remove the wings. I've already got a box of parts that are all uh, ready for, for prep and paint. If I can just get a paint booth set up and I can get some heat, I could get started on that. Well, back to talking about the paint booth. If you guys haven't noticed, I really like having a nice, clean, orderly hanger without a bunch of junk laying around or stuff. You can see it's actually pretty empty in here. Uh, you also notice I have removed the other pits and that is now in my garage with the wing hanging on the wall. And then the other two wings are actually in my bedroom. <laughs> so, but what I, my point is, there's a lot of times I like to take stuff out of here just to get it out of the way. An example being, 
the horizontal, or no, the, the elevator here. I had this sitting in my house just like this, but pretend that workbench is my couch. Guys, don't ever store your elevator like this because no matter how careful you are, eventually you're going to walk by it and just kick the very edge of it like that. And let me show you what happens when you do that. On the trailing edge of your elevator, you will get something like this. A nice little kink right here. It's actually a big kink if you can kind of see it right there. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix that. What I'm hoping is the elevator trim tab goes on the back here and there's a hinge that gets mounted to the top. What I'm thinking is one of the holes in the hinge, if I can align it right here and drill the hole, I might be able to put something in there and pull this up and straighten that out. Maybe even use a little bit of Bondo. So that hole would, wouldn't be an extra hole. It would be the, one of the holes that the hinge for the, uh, the trim tab goes on and you'd never see this. If that doesn't work, then I've got to drill out all of these rivets on the top and bottom and replace this skin. For my windshield fairing, there's just a few other places on here where I need to uh, put a little bit of uh, filler and sand and then that's ready for paint. These are the two top inboard wing skins. They are ready to rivet to the wing. And I was going to rivet those in now or on now, but I figured it would just be a lot easier to remove these wings and then rivet those skins. <laughs> uh, so that's what I'll do. Once I remove the wings, those skins are completely ready to rivet on. So when these are sitting on the workbench, I'll just grab the skins and rivet those on. Then I just got to fit the wing tips and the wings will be ready for paint. Well guys, happy 2023. I just wanted to get a video out on the first day of the year and just show you that of all the little things that uh, I'm going to start to do on my Super Duty to get it done. I've been stalling long enough on these things and I've been putting them off forever. Time to get them done. So I'm looking forward to 2023. It sure would be nice if this airplane was flying by the end of the year. Maybe that's my goal for this year. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you on the next video.